Welcome to Pigskins and Pageantry, a podcast dedicated to all things SEC football. My name is Wes, and I'd like to invite you to join me, Jesse, and Matt each week as we discuss last week's games, news from around the league, make predictions for the upcoming games, and much, much more. And welcome to a championship recap episode of Pigskins and Pageantry. On today's show, we'll recap the game and its implications. Discuss game. Uh, what game? There was no game. We're, we're not murder. there yet. I'd like to report a murder. <laughs> Matt, calm down. Good. We're off the rails already. We haven't done the, with the intro yet. Uh, <clears throat> discuss Georgia's current place in the college football landscape. Uh, run through a quick list of some of the players who've declared early for the draft. And uh, give a shout out to you, the listeners, in our really good uh, listener feedback segment, which I'm looking forward to because a lot of you had some really good uh, good takes on some stuff. So uh, all that while being joined by a very special guest and friend of the show. Uh, but, but before we introduce him, let's welcome our fantastic host. First up, let's go with you, Matt. How's it going, my friend? Oh, it's it's lovely. It is great. It is fantastic. This is hell. <laughs> What, why did I just think Absolutely. of the, the the meme of the dog with the fire? It's all fine yes, here. Yes, that's well. No, we're not there. Hey, that Matt, Matt, you're it. you're a, Matt, you're stuff. a New Year's Six champion, the Orange Bowl of all bowls. Yes, yeah. for you that's, guys. No, that, no you we talked about that man. last time. That's great. I'm I'm <laughs> fantastic with that part. What I'm not fantastic with is all the people running around with these red, black G's on their shirts and barking at small children. This is the <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Jesse, uh, first off, we missed you last week, so Happy New Year. Um, and then uh, second, uh, tell us how things are with you and uh, introduce, uh, introduce our special guest, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, things are fine. I mean, things are <laughs> things are incredibly boring, if we're all being completely honest here. Um, so I have to ask, what's up with the what's up with the earth behind you? Um, I'm still in like a very sleepy state. After okay. watching that game, like a very dreamy state. Gotcha. Of, it's very ethereal. I got some really good, like, napsies in <laughs> legitimately during that game. Um, turns out when I woke up, same, same. But on a more exciting note, um, we do have one of my very good friends and one of really the only Georgia fans I like outside of Wes. Um, <laughs> and he can he could be obnoxious if he wanted to because he played there uh but my favorite tight end from uga jack luna welcome, welcome hello back. all good to be here being natural being a reigning national champion it's something i never thought i'd say in my life but That's here it. we are yeah man it's now uh you can say it twice yeah back reigning. Back. yeah welcome so, to the back, back, back club said. it's a fun club to be in it is yeah it is <laughs> there's there are some commonalities there too in this just things. so y'all know yeah. my daughter has never seen a georgia loss in her yeah. ever conceived life it's pretty exciting so far <laughs> it's pretty they're, exciting. they're coming don't, don't yeah. worry let's, say, let, let's <laughs> keep there let's will keep be, day, there will be a day where she learns the the true georgia fan let down <laughs> but it is not this day as I say, let's keep that streak alive as long as possible. That's that's a good one. So, um, yeah. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get into the game. We'll recap it real quick and and get everybody's everybody's thoughts. Always remember, if you ain't first, you're last. All right. The uh, CFP National Championship presented by AT and T. Uh, Georgia won this one uh, big and just you know no spoiler alert. If you've been under a rock or whatever, Georgia won sixty five to seven. Uh, I was the only one to pick uh, UGA, so I did get the point, which means I win the pick them. So um, there we go. There's we've got that out of the way. Um, so <clears throat> uh, in summary, real quick, and and you know I, I had started jotting down like each drive in this game. And then I decided that um, that would be a bit much and you guys would, your eyes would glaze over and you'd be like, I couldn't write fast enough, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I wish. Yeah. The, uh, so we'll just do a quick summary here, but uh, it was a 10, seven in the first quarter. Looked like we might have a shootout on our hands, honestly. Cause you know, we had some of those moments in the secondary where, uh, you know, got some guys open back there and uh, Duggan made some, some throws and there were some big plays and, and uh, then uh, things just kind of uh, escalated quickly and got out of hand uh, from that point. Um, just in, in summary, yeah, as I say, it's kind of putting it mildly. Uh, Georgia outgained TCU, just some numbers here, uh, by just over 400 yards. Um, it was uh, 589 to 188. Uh, Georgia finishes the season 15-0 and for the first time ever. 
So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, some history there. Uh, first time a team has won back to back title since Bama, uh, to your point, Jesse, uh, <laughs> in 2011 and 12. Um, and the first to do it in the CFP era. The only other ones to do it since 1990 are Nebraska in 94 and 95 and USC in 03 and 04. Um, the 38-7 halftime lead was the biggest since Miami led Nebraska 34-0 in the 2002 BCS title game. Uh, 65 points is the most in a BCS slash CFP title game. Uh, Georgia's 58-point margin of victory is the biggest in any bowl game and the second largest in a matchup between AP top five teams. Um you know, so Stetson got a lot of coverage, uh, a, lot, a lot of stories, uh, as he well should, uh, just the, the documented career that he's had. Um, he was responsible for six total touchdowns, four passing and six rushing. Um, and uh, I believe um, you guys correct me if I'm wrong on this. He was the MVP of all four um, playoff games that he he's played in. Correct. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, just his awesome story continues there. Uh, and by the way, those six uh uh, total touch, uh, touchdowns ties Joe Burrow for the most in the BCS uh, CFP championship game. So um, Georgia ran 51 play. This this stat was the real telling one to me. Georgia ran 51 plays in TCU, uh, TCU territory compared to TCU running seven in Georgia territory. So uh, just massively lopsided there. Look, I know there's a lot of lopsided numbers there, but if we just kind of zoom out just a little bit and look at TCU, uh, still a, a big season for them, right? I mean, let's not forget that they went five and seven last year. They were picked to finish seventh in the Big 12 this year, and they ended up 13 and two and runner up in the national championship game. So, big building points uh, for that program. And who knows? Would you um, consider them the runner up? Would you? you know, if we're just talking oh. straight up, if they, you know, however you want to view it, but if we put, you know, the two in the championship game, I guess technically you could say they finished runner up. Now we could just, you know, we could. They were, the, they were one of the last two teams standing, so they technically are the runner up. They yeah. went yeah. to California. <laughs> yes, they, they did get a, a fun trip out of it at least. But uh, yeah, so uh, that, you know, they lost the same. They lost the same amount of games as Bama and Tennessee. No, just, yeah, but we only true. lost by four points. And L's yeah. and L. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead and get to it then. So obviously, a lot of numbers there, and you know, we could we could rehash the game, you know, eight hundred different ways. But I want to hear from each one of you guys and, and get your takeaways from it. And Jesse, let's start with you. What are your takeaways from from this game? I'm literally still bored. <laughs> um, I wasn't joking about falling asleep. That was true. Uh, but, uh, I think the college playoff, uh, committee did everyone a really massive disservice on Monday. Um, that was not a national championship game. And that's not to take anything away from Georgia. They won. That is to say that TCU was not the person or the team rather to be there. Um, that is something that with all the contracts, the revenue share, the ratings, the commercials, all of that. That is a disappointment. And they are going to be in trouble when it comes to all those advertising dollars because everyone's like, wow, everyone shut this off. Um, it it wasn't good. I, if I were an advertiser, I'd be like, wow, we really wasted a lot of money. Um, they chose the four most deserving teams um, instead of the four best teams. And those are very different. I'm not saying Bama deserves to be there. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it was the most lopsided national championship game that has ever happened. It was really embarrassing for the Horn Frogs. And we we definitely, we could have done better for a CFP. I know we don't control the outcome. I get it. But good gracious, that was, that was abhorrent. Um, it, I don't know how we could have gotten better. I don't know who necessarily could have been there and why they deserve to be there, but something went awry and I can't be the only one that thinks that those are my thoughts. Something went awry. And as an advertiser and someone that works in marketing, Oh, my brand would be mad. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot more we could say on that too, but let's go with you, Jack. What's, what's your takeaways from the, the national championship game? Well, I think um, one of the biggest things I took away from it was that there's a definitely a new rain coming. Now, do I think that Nick Saban is still better than Kirby? Absolutely. 
I mean, the pedigree says for itself. Now, the direction they're going, 47-year-old coach, 71-year-old coach. How much longer is Saban going to do it? I don't know. Um, but, and I personally think, too, that Bama is still obviously good enough to come back and do this. I mean, they got number one class that they, they usually do coming in. So, to me, I'm not going to say the Bama dynasty is dead. Like, because dead would mean they're going, like, you know, four and eight, three and nine, whatever. Like, to me, they're they're still like in the in the conversation, obviously. But in terms of the the current king, I mean, one year the LSU was an awesome story. That one year, Clemson did pretty good, but they had split ties in, in between. But no one's gone back to back and and even beaten the 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 top guy that was tied last year to, for this. So, I think I think if Georgia wins it again next year or Bama doesn't get to the title, that'd be a little more of like the dynasty. Uh, to the level that they think they're at might be dead. It might be now middle to bottom tier top 10, but I mean, they're still going to be good. They've got, they, they got just as much as good a talent as we do. You know, they just, they just had some tough, really competitive games this year. And, and, and it just wasn't not every year you're going to be as good. Uh, your results aren't always going to be match your talent. So now in terms of the game, I mean, I was I was a little more I thought it would be like 41 23 something like that. We I thought I thought we'd win. I thought it'd be a little more competitive especially after last week mm-hmm. for both teams. That was an exciting as exciting as two semifinal games I've ever we've ever seen obviously. Yeah. Um but I think when I saw it, like I was like all right this is going to be a blowout was um two things. One when Holly Rowe interviewed Kirby and you could just tell that he just said aggression and we're going hunting and I just felt like, oh boy, like these guys have something to prove because all week, all week, I listened to the, all the, I listened to all the podcasts when I'm driving for my sales job. You know, I follow all this stuff because I've had it, it was a big part of my life, big fan of it. And obviously, we were favored by two touchdowns. So the whole media all week was just talking about how TCU can beat Georgia. Here's areas they can expose them and they're good at, you know. Here's the awesome story, which it was that what they've done. You could tell the whole narrative all week was like TCU. We got this is an awesome story. They're gonna here's how they can beat them. I think they can beat them. And the entire Georgia guys were just like, all right, just wait till kickoff. A lot like just Notre Dame our sophomore year with the Car- Notre Dame Bama game. I felt the exact same kind of vibes. And then that Another first drive, we went down. Yeah, first drive, we just went down and just did our thing. And mm-hmm. that first drive when they had a turnover turnover. And then, but they went down. They had a chunk play. But when we, but when we came right back and scored like that with with Conkey and them, I was like, "This is about to be ugly," and it was. And and then, and then now they're probably. I would say, guys, it's in the conversation for one of the 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 team this year. It could be in conversation for one of the top five teams of all time, of a singular seat, a singular season, mm-hmm. two year run, maybe one of the best ever of like two consecutive years. Because to me, my top five teams of all time are still probably 01 Miami, 19 LSU, probably us this year. I'd say Bama, um, maybe 2009 Bama, I think, was was one of the best ones. And then maybe one of those um, at the 2013 FSU team. But, I mean, because to me, the best teams, they dominate when they're expected to be dominant. and But also they have, when there's times that they're, expected to have adversity they come out and they come through like georgia did for ohio state and they might have a slip up but every team of all those teams i listed all had one game that was closer than people thought it'd be mm-hmm. so um but yeah overall i think crushed it did great i mean i was fully su- super excited i mean all those naysayers that everyone's talking about except the tcu team all those points got just wiped away quentin johnson had one catch for three yards we ran down their throats stetson did awesome, played great, totally limited, and took Max Duggan out of the game and benched him. I mean, it, it did what we wanted with their three three five defense on the edge and through the middle. And then on and on defense, we say we had no pass rush. We had five sacks yeah. and three turnovers. I mean, like I said, all the points that you could have said were this where TCU could have beaten Georgia. We and we didn't make mistakes and they did. So right. we, that's where I, that's where my kind of thoughts are. Matt, what do you think, man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, there's really nothing else to talk about. I mean, this was a, and me and Wes, we were sitting there watching the game. We were both like, oh, I, I said it midway through the, I think it was what, second quarter, Wes. I was like, this is, this is going to get out of hand. 
And sure enough, like right after I said that, you had like two or three plays where Duggan did Duggan looked rattled the entire night. It was yeah. like when um back in the old days when you played NCAA and they used to have the little like icon above the players' heads. It was a white circle if they were confident, half a circle if they were starting to feel things, and it was a black circle if they were rattled. Home skillet was rattled. Um, and I can't say I blame him. Every time he turned around, he had a red shirt flying at his face. There was one play where I think it was either um, one of the defensive tackles or a linebacker on a blitz, like flew three feet, four feet in the air trying to get to Duggan. Duggan probably, his butthole probably clinched up. Um, <laughs> that, it was just, that was an, and I hate to say it was an awful game, but it was an awful game. Um, Georgia dominated every stat you can think of. TC went two for 11 on third down, 0 for two on fourth down. They only had 188 yards total offense, which is just stifling. Um, they had three, two interceptions and a fumble. They barely get over 30 yards rushing. It's just, it's a crap game for them all around. And I hate that because when they went through Michigan, I thought maybe, because I thought Michigan was the team to win this year. With the way they had looked, they didn't really. I mean, they they stomped stomped uh, Ohio State. They had made their way through the Big Ten, and they didn't really seem like anybody was really going to phase them. And I thought for certain they would be the ones playing for the Natty, and I thought they were the best ones suited to get Georgia. And then they turn around and lose to TCU, and I'm like, well, maybe TCU can pull this thing off. But it's like we were saying, the stage was too big for TCU, and they folded. And you could see it in um, Sonny Dyke's eyes, like midway through the second quarter, you could tell he has no idea what to do. And I've been in I've been in this situation. I've coached football games where they got out of hand, and you just like, we'll just try to play our game the best we can. There's really not a lot we can do. Some and that nights was what are nights and some nights um, aren't. And that's and that's a that's a clear indication that it was not TCU's night. Now, as far as the ramifications of what this looks like going forward, I think TCU still got some stuff to build on. It's going to be interesting to see how. PCU's uh, recruiting and all that other stuff, kind of how it all builds off of it. I was looking at Georgia's schedule for next year. Um, we may be on the verge of a three-peat because they don't play anybody next year. Their schedule's softer than Charmin. Um, I think their toughest game, I think they have to go, uh, they have to play um, at Auburn. I think that's their toughest game. And we all know what the state of Auburn football is right now. So we're probably looking at another situation, although Tennessee may give them some trouble, but we'll see. And so oh, I'm never, at, never at, not nervous about playing in Knoxville, man. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a and piece. what's too bad, um, guys, is that Georgia was going to play at Oklahoma this coming right. year, but the S- not their fault. The SEC made them switch it out. So, yeah, they were like, all right, well, who can we play? And, you know, a one-year setup when everyone else's schedule are filled, you're like, well, there's no one else you can really play but, like – patsy like and ball state came in so no one else was willing yeah. to i guess drop a game to come play georgia which which it sucks which when you're the best team no one wants to play you sometimes like at your place yeah. or whatever but yeah it's it this it's just i don't know i, I i'm not sure who's gonna stop georgia because i don't think they're losing a lot of talent i mean they lost a crap ton of talent last season and all they did was hit the reload button put a new magazine in and went right back in the fight that's um, the power of the transfer portal and Kirby's recruiting and, nowadays too. And that's that's true. And I remember when we hired when they hired Kirby, I initially thought, is he going to be able to pull off a Nick Saban esque revitalization at UGA? And and at the time, I was like, nah, there's no chance he pulls that off. Well, I could not have been more wrong because that's exactly what he's done. Um, Georgia is Bama wearing a different jersey. Um, they look complete top to bottom in almost every game they played this season. Um, they've looked real good when they needed to look real good. Um, and there's just it's just one of those situations where we're going to have to wait and see how things develop for next season and if they're really just going to hit reload again and keep going. Um, Jack, I thought it was interesting you mentioned uh, Notre Dame-Bama earlier because I, I got those similar vibes. But not just that, but the, the whole situation was very similar because you remember that year um, – Georgia Bama was a super close SEC championship right down to the wire. Um, Georgia was driving to to try to take the lead and, and time ran out. Um, so Bama survives, but then they get to the championship and just absolutely blow out Notre Dame. It's kind of the similar situation. Georgia survives Ohio state and then they get to the championship game and, and blow them out. So um, I thought, um, I thought Herb street and Fowler did a good job of, uh, of talking and didn't, uh, 
didn't pull any Brent Musburger uh, comments. <laughs> we're, we're, we're any Captain Webbs in the stands this time. So. <laughs> no. Oh man, but um, yeah, it was <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> Jesse's face right now is hilarious. It's just so I'm. It's gross. It's oh, gross. It, it is. It is exceptionally cringy. He also didn't go to Bama, and she's not from Alabama. She's from Georgia. She's from Columbus. Right. She went to Auburn. Yeah, that's practically Alabama. It's fine. She went to Auburn, whatever. I'm over it. She's still beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As uh, as was observed that evening. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, his, his Georgia fan is weird not to be on the edge of my seat. Uh, it seems like it's just something I'm kind of used to. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Jack, you we, we've brought this up. You know, you kind of expect the worst a lot of times. <laughs> uh, but uh, that wasn't the case in this one. Obviously, Stetson's the, the top story. But uh, what an insane game by Javon Bullard. Uh, two interceptions and a fumble recovery before he left with an injury. I mean, just that's just insane. And, you know, we were kind of watching. Uh, we were watching at the... Uh, at the restaurant. And so I, I could hear, but I didn't hear everything that was said. And so I didn't even realize later that uh, all until later that all of those plays were by him. <laughs> I was like, I, I, all I saw was on the screen. I was like, fumble recovery. Yes. And then I come back and come to realize later on that uh, all these were, were done by him. It was just uh, an amazing game. Um, Love seeing Lab McConkey, who wasn't highly recruited and has been battling some tendonitis this year, uh, show out with five catches for 88 yards and two touchdowns. So that was pretty I just awesome. want them to be careful with him. Can I just say that? Be because careful with him. The game, I, we know he has, you know, some lingering injuries. Holly Rowe even talked about it. He got shot up with a pain shot before him. We know it's going to wear off. You are kicking ass out there. Absolutely not. Pull him. Again, I just have a big issue, not just with Georgia, not across college football, um, that these are children, essentially, and coaching staff and athletic trainers need to make sure that they are advocating for these players. Players are going to want to play in this big stage, and they absolutely deserve to. But just make sure that you are setting them up um, to not have the knees of an 85-year-old when they're 25, because their health matters. They are humans. Um, and when you're out there dominating, you probably don't need him in there. Well, that's kind of one thing that's that like I loved about this game, especially as it moved along is that they did swap out a lot of people, uh, but the execution stayed the same. It was kind of like, you know how a lot of times you do get in the lead and you kind of get conservative and stuff like that. And, but Kirby, Kirby's mantra going into the game was leave no doubt. Um, and obviously you're playing in the championship game. The other team is in the championship game. They're there for a reason. It's not like you're playing, you know, like to your point, like a ball state or something like that, where you're going to take it easy uh, later on. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the subs did get in second, third string guys got in uh, to that point. I loved watching Branson Robinson. I mean, like what a I like, he was running like a beast out there. He's a freshman uh, finishing with 42 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, so that was pretty awesome. Looking forward to his future uh, at UGA. Um, and like I said, the backups kind of showed out that the defense kept kept charging, uh, you know, sacks, getting in the backfield and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, Kirby was already thinking about next year. And I, I think that's an interesting situation where you find yourself where you're in command of a game. But you have all these guys waiting in the wings. You get these guys in a big game like this, the backups they're in. Yes, it is. Yes, the game is out of hand, but you're still in the championship game. It is a meaningful game. Um, and I think that goes far, that will go far for their confidence and development. So um, it's it's always a constant game, right? You, you know, yes, you, you're probably going to win, but you already are thinking about next year. How do we get these guys involved? How do we get their confidence up and, and where they think that they can be the ones to take over that mantle next year? And so I, I, I liked that uh, from that standpoint. But um, that's all I've got. Um, did you guys have anything else that we need to, to, to vent about or discuss about this game or anything like so, that? So fun little fun fact that y'all can learn from me that was inside scoop. So I'm sure y'all have heard or seen the um, infamous Kirby speech that just got, that got yes. leaked. Yes. Today. So <laughs> I was ready to I'm run a, through a wall after I listened uh, to it. By I'm on a group chat with all of our, um, former Georgia tight ends, um, from when I was there, like late two thousands to, um, mid 2010s and 
Um, actually, we got a text from y'all, Jesse and Matt, man, I remember this name, but Wesley, well, if you remember Trip Chandler, that name sounds familiar mm-hmm. to you, tight end. I remember that. He texted, um, he texted us about midway through the third quarter, that audio clip, because he's buddies with one of the guys on staff that, that played when he was there that – um, got that sent it to him from the locker room before the game. So when the whole world freaked out about it, we were actually joking about it before in the middle of the game, and I and everything. And I sent it to my, I sent it to my, I sent it to Cody Jesse, and I said, uh, I don't think I hope Kirby's son wasn't around when he was speaking this <laughs> language. <laughs> but this is nothing new. Like we know no. this stuff goes on in the locker room, not just at Georgia, but in most places. It just well, I can tell you, our head coach and I was there wasn't talking that fell. Well, out, well but, that that is a good point. We had guys on staff that were. <laughs> I was going to say that is a good point, but yes, and a lot of them yeah. there, I, uh, is that way. I, anytime Kirby opens his mouth, I usually go ahead and close that tab. But now, now you've <laughs> piqued my interest into listening to how oh, how, yeah, how salary it gets. It must get really bad. There was a clip that got leaked uh, the week before the Tennessee game, where he was absolutely bearing out the uh, secondary. And I he, 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 I've I I have seen the f word and heard the f word used in very uh, <laughs> colorful ways, but but Kirby Smart uses the f word like a like a like an artist uses like a paintbrush. Like it's it's impressive. I, I have to admit, <laughs> I am kind of as jealous. a football coach, you have to be able to use it right. Like you yeah. can't just say the same thing over and over again; it'll get well, really yeah. boring. So you well, really, well, Matt, I, I just said. Said- Matt, I just sent Jesse the transcript of the actual speech so she can forward it to you. So in, in the middle of the craziness, <laughs> please, you can actually please, see what he was actually please, saying. Please. Half it doesn't make grammatical sense, to be honest. Right. With you. That's and, another thing. And I think, but it's just, you can just tell it's just an excited energy and just saying, yeah. When you're excited like that in coaches, they just say an F word every few minutes and everyone's like, yeah. It's, it's almost like a filler word, right? Where you're yeah, exactly. Of it's, it's, or, you know what I mean? Right. It's a filler word. It's just, have time it doesn't make sense, but you say that with other stuff. It's like, like yeah. it's like how Pruitt used to say <clears throat> okay between every friggin' breath. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Big Sam says I. Right, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think there was a, the other one that was. I think it was leaked before. I think it was before uh, Georgia played Bama one year, where he what? was talking talking to the players, and you know, again, you know, to, it's expected, but it was funny where it's like in the context, none of like half of it, like you said, doesn't make sense. You're like what. What? <laughs> I mean, I'm re- I'm ready to play, but I don't understand. You can tell he's just scatterbrained, trying to speak as fast as he can with everything yeah. he wants to say. And that's even coming a George fan and former player. I was just like, yeah. I mean, I don't get motivated like that way. I would have been like, I would have been excited, but I'm more of the motivation to like, like my coach John Lilly and Coach Rick. When they cuss at something or whatever, you're like, oh wow, that gets my attention. Right. And there's a time and place for it. And honestly, when I was there, the guy that um was the best motivator for us and got us most excited because when he spoke he spoke well and it made sense and it got you just hyped up with what he said was coach bobo to be perfectly okay. honest yeah so nice. fun, but i'm used to scott cochran where you don't know yeah. what he's saying but it well, doesn't yes matter. it's just a really it's gruff loud enthusiasm <laughs> and you're yeah. just like yeah yeah do that <laughs> My favorite, my favorite Scott Crockin video is him yelling, go get your flu shot. That video is, <laughs> is, ama- is amazing. Like it makes you want to run through the volume and get a flu shot. It's amazing. Right. <laughs> my favorite with Scott Cochran, I was at, um, I think it would have been my senior year, uh, pro day. We were covering pro day mm-hmm. and he, uh, Brian Vogler, who was a tight end at Alabama was. Oh yeah. Was he's a sales rep buddy of mine. Actually. Oh yeah. So yeah, it was a great, yeah. was Brian's a great guy. And, um, he was doing something. I don't, I, I don't know if he was lifting or whatever. And I think coach Cochran was saying like, let's go Vogue. You can't understand it, but it was such, um, an it's all the same, it's all the same enunciation yeah. and, and sound. <laughs> it, it was just a, and you're like, probably, I want to go lift like something. Coach o would get pregame speeches. I bet. Pro, I bet. Oh coach man. That's what, those would have it's been funny how the most exciting you, you guys from Cochran Kirby and that, and in, in that clip and coach O like, People with some of the most excited or most pumped up pregame speeches, you can't even understand half the stuff they're saying, but it's just the energy right. they're bringing. Well, oh, <laughs> and it. Cochran are both uh, Louisiana born and bred, mm-hmm. and it shows. That's a different yeah. language down there, for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, slightly related, we mentioned Coach Rick earlier. Um, I don't think we mentioned it on the show before, but congrats. He's going to be uh, inducted into mm-hmm. the College Football Hall of Fame. Well deserved. Yes. We're all very excited. Uh, as, uh, as he should be. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess that's a bit of news, but let's go ahead and get into uh, a, a little bit more news. Here's the news. 
All right. So uh, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, a few SEC players have declared early for the NFL draft. Um, and this is a non-exhaustive list. Of course, there's a lot other, a lot Ew. of others. Uh, but uh, these are some of the more notable names that you probably recognize. Uh, Devon Achain from uh, A&M, uh, Will Anderson, Alabama, Tank Bibbs, Bibbsby, Bigsby at Auburn, uh, Kayshawn Booty at LSU, uh, Jameer Gibbs uh, at Alabama, uh, Jalen Hyatt at Tennessee, uh, B.J. Uh, Ojolari at LSU, uh, Anthony Richardson at Florida, uh, Eli Ricks uh, at Alabama, Bryce Young at uh, Alabama, and then most recently announced uh, Jalen Carter and Keely Ringo from Georgia will both uh, enter the draft. So um, real quick, are, is there any surprises there? Uh, are there any ones that you just didn't see coming? What, what do you think? They all make sense. Well, they don't all make sense. They're all expected. But Anthony, baby, stay. Or go yeah. somewhere that's not professional, honey. You just, yeah. you need it. You'll get a better signing bonus if you stay. Yeah. Well, I, so, uh, it is, I'm oh, sorry, Wes, go ahead. No, 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 no. You were, you were in full thought there. What, what you well, got? I, well, I, I don't want to interrupt what you were going to say about Anthony. I was going to go to a different player. So go ahead. Oh, no. Well, I, I was going to park there, but only because we haven't uh, spoken to Jack about it before. I think our opinions on Richardson are kind of documented on this show. But Jack, what do you think? Do you think it's wise for Richardson to go? Do you think he should stay and, and get a little bit more development? He, that dude needs to. He is a raw athlete, but yep. my man, my man ain't going to get. Um, he ain't going to start. He ain't going to get. When you're picked round one for an NFL quarterback now, you're expected like it's not it's no longer the days of the late the 90s or 2000s where you pick the quarterback in the first round you sit for a year or two and then right. di- year three years like guys now are putting so much money in these guys and social media and the media are putting so much expectations on them that if you're picked round one you are expected to be ready to play and be a six and be a contributing quarterback if not successful your first year yeah, Joe Burrow especially by your second <laughs> and like it's amazing what one more year in college can do for you in that fact. Um, like, and Anthony is a hell of an athlete, but like, I would not trust him to take over any of the 32 NFL teams right now and be QB one and expect it to be well or good. Cause NFL DBs and coaches are going to eat him up. Like, I don't, with his stuff. I don't like, expect him to take over the the scout team. For yeah, the NFL, I, like he's not, think, he's not doing practice. I think Napier's not a bad coach. I think if he gets one more year there with him, he'd be pretty solid. He'd be a, in a lot better position. Um, like another example, I don't think Will Levis is that great. I think Will uh, Levis thank is you. like Wait. a. I think <laughs> I think Levis is like a second or third round talent. You you draft for like a backup, maybe right now. But like my man's not that good like to me it's it's bryce or cj they're okay. probably the two best um uh, just because we're talking about it stetson is not top few rounds don't get me wrong he's he's probably not gonna teams aren't probably gonna him there but the guy deserves to get drafted at some point he deserves to get a camp look at i mean he's the same size pretty much as, as bryce now bryce can maybe make probably make a few different throws than stet but i mean if 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 NFL teams just quickly dismiss him, I'd be worried about what how well of scouting and stuff that team is, because the guy can the guy can the guy can ball. He's proven everyone wrong along the way. He uh, and by that, like I said, I'm not saying guys he needs to start in an NFL team right away, but I'm saying like if NFL scouts just brush him aside and don't give him a serious look and think like you know we need a quarterback maybe late or some depth or we need someone to come be a good back. I mean, he's the same size almost as Chase Daniel, and my, and my man's been in the NFL for almost like 12 years and made. $40 million. He's like probably that, bigger than Kyler Murray, right? Yeah. He's, like, why is he's a, when, when he's him and Bryce were next to each other, they're about the no, same. He's not time. near as athletic at all, but I think height wise, um, because I think yeah. height is definitely. It, was, it, it, it would be funny to me, Jess, is when people say like, oh, his, uh, like Setson's height's not big enough. I'm like, he's the same height, if not taller than Bryce Young. And y'all got him going number one. So what's the, what's the difference there? If it, if it's just, if it's just pass passing results, I mean, I, I mean, I've seen them go against each other. They, Stet can make just as good of throws almost as Bryce. Like, it's not like a big drop off, is what I'm saying. You I know, don't see he, a ton of difference. Move, he can move well. He can obviously pick up an offense pretty good. He's a smart guy. 
Like, like I said, I'm not saying, hey, y'all need to draft Stet in front of these other guys. But like I said, if, if if NFL draft scouts and GMs aren't giving him a serious look, if they're in need of a quarterback or a late round, like I said, I'd be worried about what else they they're doing running the rest of your team. Yeah, and you know, obviously, there's a, a lot uh, left to be seen, but. As far as just size and kind of uh, the the type of game, I don't see a ton of difference between him and like say like a, a Drew Brees type of. Because yeah. like Matt, I'd take I'd take Hendon Hooker above Anthony Richardson and Will Levis right now. Absolutely, yeah, I would. Yeah. I mean, he he showed how much progression he just made, and granted, he's like twenty eight. But let I me mean, look at the progression he made in two years under under Heupel. I, I just in that amount of time, he picked up that offense and he turned into a Heisman contender. Should have been a Heisman finalist, but I won't get back yeah. into that can of worms. Yeah, um, I, I think if Hendon hadn't gotten hurt, he would have been a Heisman finalist, and he should have been one. Um, but I think they should make the Heisman I, five I think people. He should have been one regardless. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, unfortunately, if you do, you know, you lose that game. It's just a. It's. I mean, I, I do. I. I don't disagree with you, but I. I've just seen like the time. You know, you look at past as an indicator of the present, and there have been plenty of guys like a Dennis Dixon in 07 and other guys that were on fire and they get hurt the last few games. And the Heisman trust is like, they, you know, they only bring guys there that are healthy. If you've noticed that, like even guys that are great, if you're not healthy and miss a few games at the end of the year, they're probably not going to bring you, which is, it's not right always and safe, but it's the most best, most outstanding player the entire year. So well, kind of sucks again, that's but. the reason why I call it the Heisman, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I always I'm get nervous there. about players that are sophomores going into the draft. I just inherently, mm-hmm. I, I think you should stay for another year. I know some of them are incredible athletes and I know there's a risk of injury and they want to get a big payout, but I really do think that there's something to staying for that third year and getting a little bit extra exposure practice um, because you're like 1920, like you can't even buy a beer and you're going to go play I in mean, the NFL. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesse, I agree with you because what's different from when either I was coming up or even earlier than me is like guys are worried about, all right, you're worried about getting hurt. Okay. I work in medical field now. There is so much freaking amazing stuff in modern medicine that guys can come back pretty quickly with stuff. Money, you can make now serious money in the in the college ranks of all places. So money should never be like a Oh, I got to make money, dude. I can tell you a couple million dollars. If you're that good, it's, it's not bad. Life's good as a college kid. And then, yeah, I mean, age wise, like sets in the same age as Lamar Jackson guys. Like you're telling me is Lamar too old? You know, like, I mean, is as Josh Allen, he's older than Josh Allen. Is Josh Allen too old? You know, like, and same with Hendon Hooker. Like I yeah. age doesn't matter. It's like, can you play or not? Cause there are quarterbacks going so late in their careers now because of how well they train and stuff like age age doesn't matter. Like, you know, it, it's not, a, it's not a big deal. It's, it, that age doesn't matter to me. I think as some people do, it's, it's, I think it's silly because I would, I would draft Hendon. I would draft Hendon or Stetson before some of Will or Anthony right now, because like, I'd be like, those guys, those guys showed they can win. They can play well. Yeah. And, and they're Will and Anthony haven't really won. Like they've had some flashes, but Hendon and Seth have as just as better, if not, same if not better highlights and they played in you know uh, the nfl's fast paced just like ipo's offense just like georgia's offense so i, I mean i don't know it's unfortunately you all know too in the end of draft now certain people just get narratives for them and the people just run with it and gms get persuaded unfortunately too much and that's why a lot of them lose their jobs and why they're not good at their jobs because they get so caught up in headlines and like oh this is who espn's going to broadcast but they don't really sometimes unfortunately do their homework on some guys and say dude, this guy can play. Mm-hmm. And the teams that get those guys late rounds and they and they do well, people are like, oh, how did this guy slip through? Because people do their homework on certain guys. And they're like, hey, this guy's not really that great of a player. You know, but this guy, this guy knows how to, he knows how to win. That's why Bama has so many great guys in the NFL stuff too. Georgia's got some guys because teams want to draft guys that have winning cultures and know how to win and take adversity and, and, and aren't satisfied with losses. And those guys mm-hmm. have. Right. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to Wes, before we move on. I'm I'm trying to figure out why Ringo's coming out already. Like I, I understand the payday that makes complete sense to me, and I get it. But I just feel like with the way that that defense is set up, you get another year of development under that coaching staff. Yeah. It just it doesn't make sense to me. Why why come well, out now? And if you if you wait a year, then you're probably going to be a first round pick. 
next year if Georgia yeah. performs like they're supposed to. And and not to mention, and and Jack, you can uh you know correct mm-hmm. me or, or or go a little bit deeper with this, but uh um with him, he got a lot of uh, criticism this year uh, as well. Um because there were a lot of missed assignments, uh, a lot of uh, things that did not go as as expected with him. Um, however, they gave him a, a larger responsibility as well. And they, they asked a lot of him as well, more than last year. Obviously, last year was capped with, you know, the, the pick six. And, you know, it's going to be hard to to, you know, reproduce that kind of uh, feeling or, or look or, or, you know, that's, you know, high point of your career, so to speak, or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I think that he is a good player. Uh, do I know, do I think that right now is a good time for him to come out? Maybe, maybe not, but um, I, I don't know. I don't really know where he's projected to go either and what the payday looks like for that. So I don't know. I think he's a, I think he's a, I think he's a great cornerback. He's extremely fast. Um, He's had, a, I think he's had a tough time sometimes being very fluid and very quick in the hips, like you see some DBs have. But it's also guys because he's bigger. He's 6'2", 210. Some of those DBs are like 5'10", 5'11", like 180 pounds. Like that's something he brings to some of those other guys is a, is a physicality. And and in Georgia's defense, because they play curbing those guys, kind of like he learned from Saban, and that's what Saban's done for years, and some guys that have followed from his philosophy have done it, is they play – man coverage and they and they they put a lot of pressure on Jerry I've heard their DBs to say hey we're going to bring the house or we're going to go stop the run so y'all got to stay with these guys one on one so there's it's boom or bust sometimes you'll see Ringo and them do great sometimes like I mean I don't know if y'all have ever covered somebody a receiver it's very hard like cuz <laughs> the receiver knows where they're going you don't you know right. you got you got to try to move what they do and even when you see the highlights of like Harrison and some of those guys like like playing against him like Ringo will have them pretty locked down for five seconds, but it's that six second where he gets just enough separation and Stroud puts it right where he should put it. Right. That it can make. And all of a sudden it looks like Harrison just smoked him. When in reality, if like that's where those GMs and guys come in to say, all right, how much of this is Ringo's fault? How much is this receiver? Is that good? And also how much of it is just like the scheme and what he was asked to do on this kind of like formation and play. So, and, those, and that's for, and that's not just Ringo. That's any scout and team because the, the average wealth man will see them and say, oh, that guy got burned. Oh, he got beat. And it's like, you know, watch the tape. Like, for example, during the during the Ohio State game, Ringo was targeted 13 times. They made six catches on him. And one time, it was, and it was a touchdown. The other time, Stroud was 17 of 18 for like three, 250 yards and like t- and three touchdowns. So he he wasn't, getting, he wasn't getting smoked that game. It was the whole secondary. So, right. yeah. So I think he's a, I think he's a bit answer your question, Matt. Like, I, his mom, his mom's had cancer. He's a single parent. That's a lot of reasons sometimes too, guys, you know, mm-hmm. is that some of these guys, family situations, all right. His mom's a single parent, just just past or just uh, recently beat breast cancer. He's trying to get her set up and get that payday as soon as he, like the bigger payday. As soon as he can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Do I think, do I think he could come back and get better? Yeah. But I mean, every player could, right. You know, it's everyone's just like, all right, does it, do I, he learned from one of the, the arguably the best DB coach in the country and, and, and Kirby and those guys. And he's, I think he might feel like he's ready to go there, but some NFL teams going to see he's going to go to the combine and crush it. Cause he's a, he's a physical freak in that sense. And some NFL team, I don't know if he'll go first round. We'll see, you know, every, those mock drafts guys, they're so unpredictable, you know, <laughs> yeah. who knows who's going to pick what, but I think he's the type of talent that if you're a late round or early second round, you need a, and you need a cornerback, or heck, I could see him move to safety. Like, you know, like he's big enough. Like, if you want to move him to safety or be like a, you know, like a um a star kind of player, like what Javon Bullard plays. I mean, he's physical enough, he could go up there and do it, but we'll see. You know, NFL teams will they'll take the talent and they'll figure out what they want to do with him. So mm-hmm. that's that's why they get paid the big bucks for it. Hey, we're paying you this much money, we want you to go do this. And you usually say yes, sir, <laughs> and go about <laughs> and do it. Right. <clears throat> um real quick before we move on i know i mentioned the uh the stetson to uh to drew Brees, and that's not to say that he's going to have a drew Brees career but what reminded me of it is uh and some some guys were they were telling stories of uh like off-season workouts and they were working with uh with drew Brees and these wide receivers running routes and you know they, they hike the ball and they said they look back and they can't see anything they just see linemen and then all of a sudden 
the ball comes zipping over their heads. Like they can't even see Drew Brees' face, but he knows where they are. And the ball comes zipping out there and, you know, you know, perfectly on a dime. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it's not always about height. You know, uh, Drew uh, Brees is also uh, six. They list him at six foot. That's, that's pretty generous. Um, and so uh, it's not all about the height, I guess. So. And what's crazy, we'll, guys, we'll is that, you know, we're talking like some so some players like that. It's like maybe four or five inches, which is like, you know, like this, this much. And that's like or this high. Yeah. Like that's the difference. And like, it's amazing. It's the, It literally is a game of inches because the inches can literally get you millions mm. of dollars. Right. Yeah. Which is did ridiculous you, sometimes. But I mean, <laughs> did you see the picture? The day, you go out there and play. And if you can play, you'll make money. It was a, I think it was last year before. uh or maybe no, it was got to be, had to have been the year before. I think they had uh, Dwan Mathis. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember when it was. It was three quarterbacks, and they were all. It was like stair steps down to <laughs> Stetson, and he was the bottom one. And I was like, dang. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's, like you said earlier, it's can you play or not? So it's all relative because every time some of them stand next to me. They're massive. Right. All of them yeah. are taller than I am, except um Trent Richardson was very close to my height. Yeah. But, and but Trent um, could have Trent Richardson also could have bench pressed you like 50 times. So. With one hand, easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the deuce, oh, I can't remember his last name, the guy from Kansas State. He deuce is Vaughn. actually my mm. height. Mm, yes. Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's uh let's go ahead and get into some listener feedback, uh, because you guys had some good. Good thoughts. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> um, all right. So uh let's let's talk about some listener feedback that we got here. We posed some questions. What are you guys' thoughts on the season? What are some kind of recapping thoughts that you have? Uh and uh, first off, Jana Hamrick says just a totally amazing season in reference to the Bulldogs. Um, and then Seth Barron says TCU did not belong in the final four. So there you go. Um <clears throat> who are you gonna yep. put in instead? Like, right. Who are you gonna put in instead? So you can't put Bama in. You can't put Tennessee in. There's can't nobody put in. Bama yeah. in. You so, no, no, absolutely so that's a, not. That's a good point, and I think it's a good no. a good reason we could kind of park here for just a yeah. second. And that's I understand uh, that there are probably a couple of teams out there that were better, uh, you know, unequivocally better. Um, however, there's a certain element to handling your business right and being able to pitch that in order to get there there's been times in the past where i know georgia is better than the number two team or whoever's playing up there but did we handle business during the season no we didn't then we weren't there because of it so um we would have done the exact same thing bama did to notre dame my sophomore year i can tell you from a frontline view but we didn't handle our business right so we, we weren't there the most deserving not necessarily the best but well, you also got to think go is to, when we get to the playoff, then this will be a moot point. Well, that's 12, true. 12, 12. But then you also have to, in retrospect. All right, so real quick, sorry to interrupt you, Wes. Okay. What's y'all's opinions on the 12? I'm pro- for it. I'm pro. You're not going to get think... the argument out of any of us. On I'm, that I'm no. all for it, especially when they do those. Everyone that says no, like Jesse Cody's against it. He thinks that it's just going to be blowouts. And I, I've told him, like, dude, I don't think you're wrong, but. I'm telling you guys, I think you know this too. When they do those first games on on on-campus sites and Jesse, you talked about advertising and buzz. Oh my God. People are going to be like, I see why we did this now. It's going to be insane. It's going to be hyped. It's going to be for economy. Good for recruiting. Good for (laughs) advertising. Now they got to figure out the recruiting piece. I think that's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be interesting how they figure out the recruiting piece, but they got two years to kind of like play around with it before the big new contract in 2026 comes. But yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be awesome. Wait for like, 30 for 30s. You're going to get some Cinderella stories out of it. Inevitably. Like, I want to go play in happy Valley in late December. That would be so cool. You know, right. or I want Penn state to come to Athens for a playoff game. It'll be right. insane. Like example, yeah. like that. it'll be, it'll be so much fun. You see and, a lot fewer players sitting out at the end of the season because they're playing yep. in meaningful games. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But you need to find a way to pay these guys more to play in those games too. Like, right, I think they – more. Start give, stop giving all this money to the conferences and give some to the players that play. Right. Yep. Um, next, uh, Jeff Sand said, uh, Kirby's on a different level when it comes to coaching. Master motivator, rel- relentless at the details, practicing in ways that are changing the game, recruits and develops like no one else. 
Uh, takeaway is that Georgia is probably a serious power for a while, uh, as long as uh, Kirby Smart can keep up that focus and intensity in himself. This program will be absolutely incredibly hard to knock off or duplicate somewhere else for that matter. Everyone's saying it's Saban too, but it's not. This is something different altogether. Better remains to be seen. Kirby learned under him, but he's definitely his own person. In coaching, you can't emulate someone because you like them. You can copy policies and procedures, but you have to be yourself. That mentality he has is eye-opening because it's who he is, and the players not only buy in, but it becomes who they are. Again, this is something a little di uh, a little different than uh, – th again, this is something a little different we're watching, yes. Yeah, so um, – well, that's a lot there. But what are you guys' thoughts? I'm just waiting to see if Kirby goes to the NFL at any point. Why would he? He's mm -hmm. not going. Why we would he? That He's lucky. not going. There's no way. The man's yeah, in a, a, a UGA alum. That would be the equivalent of Philip Fulmer leaving Tennessee to go to the NFL. It's not happening. There's yeah. no chance. Not to mention he's you know, he's getting paid a ridiculous amount already. It's there's a certain feeling to to winning at your alma mater. Um, he not to mention at least at this state in the game, he's treated like you know a king in Athens, right? Um, you know he probably doesn't have to lift at the least finger. He's a lot smaller in the NFL, a lot <laughs> yeah. smaller. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it would happen anytime soon. I'm just curious to see what the offers look like because there's offers. Yeah. There's um, Kerry Dawson says amongst all the doubters, he meaning Kirby just kept chopping and one and one and one now a legend. Um, uh, Tommy Smith has some thoughts about several teams. He said, UGA was impressive in the majority of their games this year. Con congratulations to them for a second consecutive natty. Kirby did a great job with motivating his team to do great things for such a young team. They're going to continue to be scary. Good South Carolina's finish to the regular season was impressive. Two top 10 victories Definitely. is nothing to scoff at. And an eight win season for them was, in my opinion, over overachieving this year. Great coaching job by Shane Beamer. LSU under a new head coach did well this year. That is a team that may be coming back to scare in the West. The team Spencer uh, Rattler's coming back. Yes, he is. He, he oh, is. Man. He he That's pulled the uh he pulled the video, the the Leonardo DiCaprio from Wolf of Wall Street. Now, I'm not leaving. He's smart. I think he should have come back because he's 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 he finally yeah. got something going there. Like he's a guy like Matt. So like, don't go early. You know, stay back. You yeah, can... no need to. Yeah, and then uh, it says uh, Tennessee Vols look to have uh, finally come back to relevance. Losing Hendon Hooker will hurt, but having an arm talent such as Joe Milton with another offseason to improve his accuracy and master the offense, there may be little drop off for that explosive offense. Matt, Off I want to see how far Joe Milton can actually throw a ball in a real game. Like yeah. he you threw, put him on the goal line and just tell, like 110 yards. Like put him that. on the goal line and put Squirrel White or Brew McCoy on a go route and say, "Hey, <laughs> hey, Joe, just it, throw it." I want to so I, I see how yeah. far he can actually throw a ball in a real game. He, right, I think he, he can awesome ball out now. Now it may not be as accurate as other people, but he'll get out there. I think I think if he's sitting at the goal line in a real game, if he gets time. And it's and, the, and it's open. I I wouldn't be shocked if my dude can hit it hit hit the th other thirty yard Probably. line. 70 yards. I, I wouldn't be surprised. There's a reason there's a reason why uh, Vault Twitter calls him Bazooka Joe. Yeah. Um, and then Matt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you handle this one. Do you do you know how to pronounce your new recruit's name? Because I don't. <laughs> no. The eight million dollar man. I that's how you pronounce his name. I am I, mm, yeah. Um uh, I am yeah, I'm not gonna try. Any, anyway, he says how fast he can pick up the offense could go a long way for the future of the program as well. Uh, unbelievable year for my Vols. P.S. Kentucky, Texas A&M. Such high hopes coming into the season. Definitely didn't see this drop off from those two teams. Oh, Jesse, how's your feeling on uh, oh your boy Bobby Petrino coming to College Station? How do we feel about that? L O L <laughs> Someone... is how I, I would guys. I would pay for the SEC Network Plus feed of that offensive team meeting room when things oh, get yeah. kind of spicy. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. The ego the egos you know gonna... are going to be just oh it's that gonna be awesome. needs to be rated M for mature. Um, oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. I, it's be it cool. already feels slimy. You got Jimbo, you got Bobby, you got DJ Durkin who I not not be not to be too soon but he killed like, a guy died under his watch, right? right. For, right. for not good reasons. Like Yeah. It's going to be really spicy in college. They are desperate to win there you know man. i forgot I about that aspect gosh there's it. so much <laughs> it's there's slimy. a lot there's a 
I just, there's a lot going on down there. Um, College Station, just start investing in that crisis PR management. Just, <laughs> yes. 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 Because um, your compliance officers are going to cry. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know that as soon as compliance they've hired Bobby, they're just like, you know what I want to do? I want I want Butch Jones to get a job over there too, just so we can just throw one more big log on that fire, because that would be interesting. People be falling on helmets left and right. I mean, I mean, guys, you know they could use they could use Ed O as a they could use Ed O as a D line coach. Yes, yes. Don't, don't put that voodoo on Ed O's. You know? Don't do. We like Ed. There's no, there's no need for Ed to do that. I mean, Jeremy Pruitt's a hell of a DB coach. I'm just no, he's going back to Bam. <laughs> oh god oh yeah that's the, that's the room no guys that's cliff kingsbury is gonna go to bama he's gonna be the oc i'm telling you that would, i mean that would make me sense. and wes actually me and wes actually talked about that when that story broke on yep. monday night about how auburn might have screwed the pooch there because if they had just been patient and waited they potentially probably could have brought kingsbury in and kingsbury or, and um him. had a Brought him back, or, yeah, or 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 a And M, yeah. They they just they moved too quick. Like Jesse, you thought Joey Freshwater was bad. Wait till Single Cliff hits the Bama streets. <laughs> no one will be. He's safe. gonna throw on the aviators with that smile and just look at the ladies and say, "Deal with it." Oh god, oh god. Um, but honestly, I'll take him over Bill O'Brien. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm sorry, and I swear, if my Patriots bring Bill back. Mm. I'm gonna be unwell. He's better than the defensive coordinator they have as an offensive coordinator. <laughs> I, know, I know. It's just yeah. Well, Guys, I, I'm just gonna be a coordinator. I bet I've two weeks ago in Las Vegas was a tough day for you to watch that game, Jesse. It was <laughs> it was not great. Yeah. It was not great. So we'll uh we'll I'm definitely curious to see how how all those scenarios work out. Um Mick Kirkwood posted um, his response was he just posted the SEC shorts video where Georgia has hope again. So <laughs> that was that was an entertaining one. Um, and then uh, we have uh, AJ uh, Hopkins. Uh, he says he's got a few thoughts. Number one, five years ago, college football wasn't on my radar. Never thought that I'd not only listen to, but look forward to a weekly podcast made by people in my backyard. Great show. And I'll definitely re leave a review. So thanks, AJ. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, and, AJ. Uh, Definitely appreciate that. And then number two, he says, uh, we are going to miss Mike Leach. And we absolutely will. Uh, he said, I've been down a rabbit hole and seen all sorts of hilarious clips of him back in the day. So th it's there's tons of them. And you'll be sitting there for hours. So <laughs> um, number three, it's a great day to be a UGA fan. Amazing last two seasons. Uh, is this what Alabama fans felt like all the time a few years ago? Uh, are all the other teams going to jump on the we hate UGA bandwagon now? Um, so we'll, we'll I've see been on, on that. that bandwagon. I was gonna say, <laughs> yes, that's what it feels like. <laughs> also, we already hated you, even when you were bad, because you annoyed us. Um, if I'm just well, being hate's really honest, it's it's a strong word. <laughs> I didn't. I I told. West I think loathe entirely is a little better I didn't, way. I didn't. I didn't hate UGA until Kirby showed up. I liked Mark Rick. I didn't have a mm. problem with him. Mark Rick was fine. I just. Great it's man. Coaches. Okay, Kirby before, me the wrong before way. we get not before far. we get to number four uh, in AJ's list, uh, Matt, I posed this question to you uh, when we were watching the game on Monday. Uh, but uh, Jack, let me ask you: uh, What is the 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 single most uh, deciding factor on you uh, hating a team? Typically, their fans. The fans. Oh, sorry, I was asking. Or Jack, the fact but that's that they cool. whoop our. <laughs> Or or they whoop or they or they whoop our butt, but yeah. Oh, I, I you didn't need me to answer you asking. No, but that's okay. What do you? Yeah. What do you, What do you think, Jack? For which one? Well, for, for what? What is Jack, usually the Jack, single? Jack was in prayer. Yeah. yeah. The, the single most. Deciding What's checking on the baby on the monitor? <laughs> ah, no, that's that's definitely more important. Um, no, that's so uh, usually the single most deciding factor when you hate a team. Oh. um... Well, I'd say they're fans, but there's a joke we say in my family that the SEC is just – the joke in the SEC is our rednecks are better than your rednecks. <laughs> like, we all got horrible fair. jackass fans. Fair, man. Man. I mean, right. It is what it, it is. Like, like people say, I, you know, when I go to Georgia, I just treat it bad. I'm like, dude, like, go to any school. You're If you wear the other colors, they're not going to like you. Right. For when I hate teams, it's just kind of like if they've just, just constantly just let um ruined my hopes and dreams, like <laughs> all that – and also, like, like for example, I really liked 
I really liked the TCU story. It was pretty cool. Like, you know, I, I didn't hate them. Um, but like there were teams that I played like James Franklin when he was at Vanderbilt, like from what I, I know, he, I know he said to some players and teammates of mine, guys, a jackass, mm-hmm. Urban Meyer. I saw, I know like, from my coaches, what they told me he would say, you know, when he was actually recruiting, like stuff, they said, like, like he's a jackass, you know, like there are people, like, I think I don't necessarily, not necessarily teams because teams and personnel on people, teams change, right. but I think I think the characters make who you not like and and stuff like that. If that makes right. sense. So right. my hate is most just like who's there and how are they acting towards you. And that's probably that's that's a good point because your perspective is going to be much different than ours, especially as yeah, a, a yeah, former and player. And that's fine. You know, everyone because, has a different version of fandom and how they hate or don't like. You know, like my version of who I hate might be different than Matt's, and Matt's might be different than Jesse's. Well, you know? especially, but that's being, the only reason why we it's all fun. Well, especially right. being a, a former player and kind of like uh, the the inside scoop and all that stuff, you can't you see it from a different lens as well. So yeah, that's... and and I'll admit, Wes, like my perspective, like I, I can't remember if I told the story in the podcast before when I first met you guys, but like my freshman year was 2011, same as Jess Jesse, and I was a fan, you know, growing up all my life, big big Georgia fan, you know, I wasn't like over obnoxious or over bad, but I want got there for camp. And within the first week of camp, um, we had our picture day, like that Saturday, right? They know the fan day where everyone gets all signed and stuff. I'd been there a week. No one knew who the heck I was. I was not a recruit big time. I got there just late because I got I can only report the first day of classes. So that's why I, no one knew I was. I was a late addition to the preferred walk on spots. I go to camp and I'm sitting amongst. There's five tight ends in our my freshman year, and all other four of them were all the number one tight end in their class. And then there's me. So I was like, I'm just, I'm just here for the ride. Right. But there were fans from the five-year-old girl to the 75 year old man who were all as giddy and all as excited to see me and get my picture and take my autograph. Mm -hmm. And some of them asked who I was because they know who I was, which is fine. But they were so excited to see me, even though they had no idea who I was. And I thought my fandom really kind of changed to see like, wow, this is, this is intense. Like just because you wear this, like when you're actually a team, like it changes. And yeah, my perspective definitely as a fan changed through college, seeing what the guys go through, sitting with their parents and family and seeing what drunk, stupid fans of all of all teams say to some of these kids and do and stuff, you know, and how people talk about certain things when they have no idea how, what they're talking about or, or have ever, no offense, Jesse, to you know, women who don't play the game, you know, but it's like, even- I still have four years of eligibility. <laughs> That's right. So- yeah. Like, Maybe there are some girls I met who know football and are respectful and good fans. And there are some girls I know who know football better than some guys. If I, if you really ask me like, how well do they know this game versus this guy? I'd be like, dude, just cause you're a guy doesn't mean you know the game better than her. Like I see Mina Kimes on TV all the time. And that girl, she knows her, she, she knows her stuff better than some analysts they have on that thing, just because they played football or coached it, or they have a media degree. So they think they know what they're talking about. <laughs> Mad dog. <laughs> roost, so like, they're like, yeah. So, but fandom is like, it's an interesting concept, you know, how it works because just be, like no one knows everything. Some guys have a better perspective than ours. And also there's some fo- former players that think sometimes because we played that what I say, I know more than you or my opinion is better than yours. It's not always true. Like I I, I said, TCU was, was going to lose 40 to 23. They got beat bad. And I'm a former player for the dang team. And I didn't know that, you know, and Jesse could have said, oh yeah, they're going to win 70 and not Georgia won 70, nothing. And she would have been closer. Right. So no one knows. You know, yeah. it's, it's just, that's why it's fun because that's why people gamble and some of that because it's like <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, no, um, it's a, it's a it's a great point. Um, Matt, you and I were talking about it and, uh, Monday night as far as uh, fandom, and that's kind of one reason. And I don't want to speak for the rest of you, but at least from my <laughs> perspective, that's one reason why I do this. I do this show is because let's be honest, uh, there are tons of shows out there um, that where people are jerks and and throw around you know smack talk not that we don't you know fine bomb show <laughs> yeah n- not that we don't you know give each other a good a good uh you know ribbing every now and then good naturedly of course uh but you know those shows are dime a dozen and you know they're left and right and the most of it is like clickbait stuff 
Most of it is like, I don't even half the time, I don't think that they even believe the things that they're saying. They just say them because they know people will watch the videos. They'll click on the links. They'll do all this stuff. Yeah. People and, have, a, it's amazing what the power of us, like you said, of, of hate or like disagreement will, will take you in the media yeah. world. Just in the headlines where people read the oh, headlines, yeah. they're like, that's wrong. And they click on it and then they have to type their little comment and, you know, sure it gets clicks and everything, but let's, let's be honest at the end of the day, uh, that's not, you know, conducive to being a, a good human. And so I, I, I do kind of, mm -hmm. from that standpoint, I don't want to be that guy. So going back to the, what started this whole conversation where, you know, a lot of times the reason people hate other teams is because of the experiences that they've had with fandoms. I don't want to be that guy. When people say, oh, I hate Georgia, I don't I don't want them to think Wes's face. Right. Um, I want them to think somebody else. If it has to be hatred for Georgia, I don't want it to be me. So I it, and, and we also said it's actually counterproductive to your fandom. You think that you're stating your case and you're sh oh man, I'm showing them. But at the end of the day, you really just made other people hate your team more. And, and yeah. you know, it's just <laughs> negative energy out there. Right. Huh. So it's, it's it's almost like extremism breeds extremism. <laughs> what a novel concept. <laughs> and like I said, guys, it don't matter who says it. Every team has those that jackass or redneck fans. Right. No matter who it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Every team um, has. AJ uh, finishes up with his fourth point saying, uh, certainly looking forward to next season, listening to your thoughts each week. He then added, I'll even make a drink, a drinking game out of it and take a shot. Every time Matt says something about getting about someone getting boat raced by Georgia. <laughs> Hopefully they don't boat race anybody next year, but we all know that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. 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 Uh, I oh, think the most exciting game I'm looking forward to as a Georgia fan next year is when Ole Miss comes to Athens. I think that's going to be a fun game. I think it'd be. I think Kiffin will certainly have fun. Yeah. That'll be the most exciting. Well, the Georgia's home for next year is Missouri, Ole Miss, all those non-conference teams. Um, Kentucky comes to town. Carolina will come to Georgia, which might be kind of interesting. Maybe yeah, not. Yeah. Who knows? Okay. Maybe not. If it, if this year's any game is an indicator, it's going to be a blowout again. But we'll see. Right. But who knows? It, it kind of the way Carolina finished. It depends on which yeah. team shows up, I guess. Who knows? Well, it's, I mean, you know that it's like it's like it's like when do you play certain teams at certain times of year? Like there's been yeah. between all three of our teams, there's been so many years where if you played our team at a certain time of year, we would have beat you or probably lost to you. You know, it just depends yeah. on what time of year and how the team. It's a different team every week because it's eighteen to twenty-two year olds or twenty-five if you're Hendon Hooker and Stetson Bennett. So right. <laughs> Well, to that point, if if we had played some teams uh, the way that we played uh, Mizzou and uh, Kent State this year, who knows what happens? And granted, yeah. I know that the mentality around those games is different as well. So, I mean, who's to say? I don't know. Um, but uh, I do have one question for you guys. What do you guys think about the design of the uh, of the shirt? Oops, I can't oh, see it. I Oops, it just disappeared. Oh, I think I was too close. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan either. I got it because it's, you know, it's the official locker room you know, shirt and everything. But I was I, even like on, something from a 1970s Vegas slot machine. Yo, think, well, what's funny is that was the that was like the game shirt for every New Year's Six champion and the and the national championship. So it was like the same kind of like style and font. Jesse, I think we need to get some like advertising, like people to come out here and get Jesse a better branding like, help. I yeah, I was big Jesse, time. I'm more than happy to recommend. It's weird because, because of, yeah, there's I, a lot of stuff. I, um, that's a that's a Nike thing. Like someone I was talking to be like... a, a designer or somebody who's in the kind of the designing industry right now, and they said that's very 2023. I don't know why, but it seems like things are kind of going to that that type of look. I don't. You should don't design really a shirt because um, everyone's gonna wear the shirt, like you said, Wes, when it's after the game because like they're yeah. just throwing out the hats and the t-shirts. But like, you should design a shirt that when people take a step back and off the the game winning high be like i want to wear that shirt that's a sweet cool well, shirt. well you know like the one last year i really liked the one uh last year from the the victory lane one i it thought was, it looked they, pretty a couple of the different styles they had last year were cool there were a couple of the bamba ones i've liked or you know whatever and they've seen it like i liked how like when like i think it was early on they had like the the one like flat bill hat when it's like mm -hmm. that's how like that's cool you know stuff like that but right you know, what's up matt what's your question <laughs> What the hell is that? What 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 are we what are we pointing I'm, at? I'm looking. I pulled up a picture of the shirt, and I'm trying to figure out what in the hell I'm looking at. Talking about the one that I have on. This, oh, yeah. This, everyone, this looks, every everyone is this. Like, it's not just you get it, man. It's every what? Georgia fans. I know they're like that's an. Ugly. I saw it the this, night that they this, were wearing it on the field, and I was like, mm, that's ugly. I'll probably buy it, I, but it's I ugly. Seen, I'll probably buy it. <laughs> I, uh, guys, I've seen high school design teams make better shirts that look better than this. <laughs> Like this looks 
all, like this looks like somebody like ten minutes before they printed them went, <laughs> oh crap, I forgot to make a design. <laughs> and, and, and they type that up, and it just it's. I, in fact, I have a buddy of mine who's real big into uh fashion, and I'm gonna send him a picture of that right now, and I'm gonna yeah, let you guys know what he says. Someone, he's going someone to rip at Nike that apart. Did. Someone at Nike, or multiple people at Nike, if it get to this point, just didn't think back. Huh? Are people actually gonna like this shirt? You know, shirt? Jesse, I really appreciate you saying that about the the '70s slot machine because I was trying to think of where it came from, and I think it that's a perfect like description. I was thinking kind of like the like you know some of those fonts from like the old West TV shows. Mm -hmm. I think the connection there might be um, the the old Western uh, casino in uh, in Vegas. Yeah. To your point, because they had lots so. of cowboys and Indians in the in L.A. Like <laughs> that makes no sense. I mean, on I the Victory know. Lane thing made sense because it was in Indianapolis, but wasn't it Indy? It's a it was in Indy, wasn't it? Game meets was it game recognized fame something like that? I don't know if that's supposed it's to be so the L.A. Dumb. connection. Yeah. It looks awful. Yeah. I don't know. It looks awful. Anyway, um, we so that's it. that's really all that um we have from a fan uh, or yeah listener feedback and stuff like that. Um, did you guys have anything else that you want to get off your chest? Any any what ifs, any opinions, any whatever that you wanted to to talk about? I'll have more opinions after draft day. It's good to be a champion. Oh, yeah. Dra <laughs> uh, draft day is going to be interesting this year. All right. Well, real quick, since uh, there's a you know a couple of things we haven't touched on, uh, I have a couple of questions for you, Jack. Um, so I know that you're you're in the Athens area. How what is the feeling? How is the feeling in Athens this year versus last year? Like I know last year, obviously people were running through the streets screaming. Was it the same or how was it? It was the ex it was the exact same this year uh, yeah. from what I saw. I don't think it was as crazy as last year on the streets, but it was more even more people. I think it was. Um, because I mean, let's be honest. It's a little harder to get to LA than Indianapolis for certain students and fans. True so, though. Um, no, it's been exciting. They got the. There's another championship parade scheduled for um, Saturday. I'll be in Breckenridge for a bachelor party. Um, I probably shouldn't have gone anyway this year because last year when I went, my wife and I we think we got COVID and we had and we and we had a baby then. So we probably should we probably need to steer away from another parade this year. <laughs> It was um it was freezing last year at the it was uh, pretty cool. It was awesome. I am glad we did. It was really yeah. a cool experience to go and do for the first time in 40 years, but hopefully they get more often. Yeah. Happen well, often, especially like, so we'll see. You know, when I went last year in my mind it's like are we ever going to do this again? So that yeah. I didn't care if it was freezing or not. So <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't, didn't either. You, didn't you invite me to go to that West? Didn't you I, ask me if I wanted to go. That would have had a horrible time. <laughs> I did, but just I, I'm still you did. And I'm I'm trying to figure out what in the heck you thought. Like you you knew I, I wasn't going. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You didn't have to wear Tennessee also, stuff. <laughs> but the the scene in Athens is pretty excited. It's, it's pretty good, pretty excited. Um classes start back this week, so I'm sure I'll be That'll be fun. It'll be a huge scene, I'm sure, Saturday at the parade for everyone. Just don't plan on eating anywhere afterwards. <laughs> oh God, no, no, no. Yeah, it'll be like hundred thousand so people just, there, man. Um, just so you, and, and you then there won't be tailgating, I, 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 so people are all gonna go to the restaurants. But yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sure like Stetson will speak. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe Christopher Smith might speak. Mm, um, yeah, we'll see who else who else they might have on speaking on that. But um, it'll be yeah, it'll be be real exciting. I'm sure. Um to do on that end for everybody else but i'll be i'll be watching and skiing from afar in breckenridge and not having any more children from that event so i'll be <laughs> i'll be i'm trying to stay, stay away from that <laughs> right um yeah and well i wonder if um I wonder if uh nolan smith will speak as well i know he's oh, yeah, been, he'll definitely probably you're right he'll probably speak he's been big presence on the sidelines um mm -hmm. this year so um and also real quick a lot of people are throwing around three pete I'm not, you know, I'm not there because, you know, anything can happen. Uh, but how are you feeling about next year? Um, I think the toughest game will be away will be Tennessee. I think the hardest game at home will probably be, I assume, Ole Miss, just because Kiffin's, Jesse knows Kiffin's Kiffin. And mm -hmm. Matt, unfortunately, too, for a year. Will, um, but SC Championship game, I'm fully expecting to be probably Bama or LSU uh, there again. We'll see what happens. And then you know when you get to the playoff, man, it's whoever's there, whoever's there. Um, I think I think there's a good chance, but you know we there's all the factors that come in. You guys gotta guys gotta stay out of trouble. Guys gotta stay academically eligible. Guys gotta be healthy the whole year, or healthy when you need them to be. 
backup guys got to step up and develop guys got to go through spring practice and all that stuff and get better. We got to find out who our starting quarterback is, you know, some of that stuff's important. You know, you got to figure out who's actually going to end up going pro who's actually going to transfer when they do if they do, because guys are going to have to transfer. Some guys at Georgia might be like, Hey, I've won two national championships in a row. I think I've accomplished all of the tingle I want to do. Maybe I want to go somewhere else and now play the rest of my career, you know, that I may not have a national championship choice or, go play that I because I want to it's closer to home or I'm going to be getting more money or hey I've graduated I want to go maybe somewhere else for one more time to play while I can you know so it, there's all those guys crazy factors into who knows if it's going to work again for Georgia next year you know it's, um, so, so because unfortunately if you do anything less than national championship next year will be a seasonal failure how the media and national people will probably look at it Jesse knows how that feels from Bama people it's it, it's tough at the top man it's, made the sugar bowl this was our yeah. worst year in 15 years. Yeah. yeah. So you, you mentioned a good point about quarterback. Um, and so I, I really kind of want to go there next. Is it a foregone conclusion? It seems like uh, Carson Beck is, you know, being prepared to to take over that role. If that, if that does indeed happen, is it a foregone conclusion that Bron, uh, Brock Vandegrift is gone? Who knows? He apparently he told one of our reporters after the game in terms of transferring and stuff, that he needs to pray on it. I, I, I Who knows what that means? Um, but I think he's going to go through, I think, I mean, I think the competition guys is probably gonna go through the fall, to be honest. Like I'm curving them won't announce a starter. I mean, yeah, they, I don't, I don't blame them. You know, they probably want to wait and everything. And sometimes they, you know, they do that because they don't want to tell the other team the advantage, but sometimes they're like, how well does this guy just in totally encapsulate the team through the weeks and, and, and grind we put him through. Um, cause they're gonna take a lot of grind and pressure as a Georgia quarterback this next year, as you guys know, you're gonna be the face of that team probably. So mm-hmm. personally, I think Vandegrift, if what I saw him play in high school once or twice, we had a friend who coached on his, um, on his high school staff. We went and saw it during COVID. Um, Beck, I think is a great thrower. I don't know how mobile he is. Cause that was, as you guys saw Stetson's best quality, I think was how he could get himself out of trouble mm-hmm. and make a few of runs here and there. Um, the same with Hendon, like Hendon was a great thrower, but his ability to run and got him out of stuff. Same with Bryce sometimes too. Like if you can't move in the pocket, you're done. There's so much speed and power now in yeah. defenses that if you can't be able to get out of the stuff, like that's why JT as good as he was a thrower, like that's why he's, he's not really that great of a overall quarterback and why he's going to go to races. Look like he did down the stretch too. Yeah. So Will's not, Will's not mobile either. Yeah, so we'll see what um we'll see what happens. I think I think Vandegrift might have the best of both worlds. Gunnar Stockton, I think, is really he's a solid QB. Um, I haven't seen him play in a spring game, so we'll see how he does year two. But from what I understand and think about, like who brings the who maximizes the offense the most, and who's the team believe and trust in, and who has that kind of like that sets in like you know fourth quarter end of game, like I want the ball in my hands and I'm going to actually execute and win. I think that's the, that, those are be the qualities they look for all year. And yeah. I think Vandegrift maximizes the offense athletically the most, but you know, the guy still got to go out there and play and do it. You right. know, like we can talk all you want, but how do you do in your spring practices and the spring game when you actually have all the people watching and now like, you know, Hey, we're, you know, cuffs are off, man, go, go play. Right. Um, same in the spring and same in the summer ball. Like, Hey, you're now, we're putting more on you. It's hot. It's tired. How are you going to respond to this? Are you going to encapsulate the team? Are the team going to respond to you? Do you got chemistry? And then thankfully we have UT Martin, like not a too hard of a game to start off. So you can kind of like, all right, man, let's see what you do. I mean, the first hardest game I think we have, it will be Carolina at home. And you know, they ain't, those guys aren't, they're not like, they're, they're still an SEC football team. As much mm-hmm. as we can make fun of here and there, they got dudes on their team that are going to come after you. And you're going to be, It'll probably be a night game or something like that. You know, there's gonna be a lot of people watching. Like, you know, how do you respond? So, thankfully, that quarterback, whoever it is, has got some studs around them, and they got Brock Bowers to throw to him. My man, Tight I can throw to Brock Bowers. I can <laughs> back with Brock Bowers. Yeah. So, we'll see. Um, if I had to put money on it, like who's starting day one, I'd say maybe Brock. But it's funny, guys. Every year except for this year, Kirby has changed quarterbacks at some point. Mm-hmm. So money's That's on true. it. it may, whoever starts day one may not be the starter day two because of injuries or whatever happens. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse, who's going to start at QB for Bama next year? That's, That's a good tough. question. I, I'm going to say Milrow, but we never know what could happen with the transfer portal. They, they, um, they have a stud freshman coming in too, I think. Right. We do. We do. Yeah. Um, We'll see. And Matt, you think it's a foregone conclusion? Milrow, 
but if Milrow has not found um, in spring practice, if he doesn't find some sort of composure, um, and ability to throw, and run, yeah, and and he's got to make he's got to make better throws. He's Matt, what do you think? Mobile. You think it's the you, 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 you think it's the Milton show, or you think the you think uh, Mr. Eight Million Dollar Pajama Pants is going to come do it? <laughs> uh, I I first off, don't talk about him like that. He's a saint. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm I'm gonna let y'all in on a little bit of a secret fear that I have. I I don't know how I feel about Nico. I see a lot of press and I see a lot of like attention. And I've seen him. I've seen a couple clips with him throwing. I just I don't know if he's mature enough yet. Um, it, it, I think it's That's I fair, think fair. it's Milton's job. I think it's Milton's job to lose right now. I, I think agree. he's shown so much progress. In the couple of spots that he's been in, he played really well in the Clemson game. Um, and I I think as long as he plays if as he continue if he continues to progress, he'll have the starting job next year. I think Nico only sees the field in mop up, and I think Nico only sees the field if Joe has an absolute like nuclear meltdown. I think. I, I don't I don't know. I could be wrong. There's a lot of people that are really high on Nico right now, and and again. I'm tempering my expectations because everybody um, that you talk to from Vault Twitter, they're immediately calling him the next Bryce Young. They're calling him, uh, you know, he's going to be the best quarterback Tennessee's ever had. And I'm just like, guys, he hasn't played it down in the SEC yet. Let's wait and see how it goes. So, right. I, I think it's Milton's job. I think Joe's got it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, well, do uh, you guys have anything else? Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Well, uh, Jack, it's always a pleasure, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, let's do Thanks, it again guys. next year. Oh, so, yeah. Hopefully uh, I'm, I'm available whenever y'all need me to have some insider analysis. Hopefully I'll see y'all again in a, in a championship recap again. Yeah. So, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> well, all right. Well, uh, we appreciate the, you guys listening to us. Uh, if you'd like to contact us, please do so. Email us at pigskinsandpageantry at gmail.com. We are at Pigskins and Pageantry on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, we are also at PPSEC Podcast on Twitter. Uh, don't forget we are available for download on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and most podcasting apps for iPhone, Android, and other operating systems. We're also on uh, Amazon Music and iHeartRadio, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment, subscribe, and review five stars. We would love that. Increase our uh, visibility and ability to continue making these and. Uh, like I said, we just greatly appreciate you guys listening. So, uh, Matt, I see you have a visitor, a little cameo appearance there. So, uh, hey, uh, this is Wes. Until next time, go dogs. Y'all, football may be over, but don't you worry, Bama fans, because we are a basketball school. Real tag. <laughs> guys, it's only 234 days. You can do That's anything. It. 34 more Saturdays till we're back. You can, all, you can handle anything. Um, yeah. Take care of yourselves. Go ball. Go dogs. <laughs>